This is Twit. Tell me about your initial impressions of iPhone 13 and uh, and kind of what how, how you're feeling about it uh, in these early days. Did you put it through its paces? Yeah, I did. So one of the first things that I had to check, and I've checked it several times again to reconfirm, this is not the Pro Max, this is the Pro. And it <laughs> feels humongous to me. Um, bearing in mind, I was on the iPhone mini before. Um, I actually had a 12 Pro Max. So theoretically, I know what the size is. Um, but, uh, you know, the shuffling devices around in the family, there was a claim on the 12 Pro Max um, when I said that I was interested in getting a mini. So that happened. Um, but, you know, this, the iPhone mini is... It doesn't seem screen size wise, like it's much smaller, but wow, that does make a big difference when you're holding it. But I couldn't say no to these cameras. These cameras are so good. Um, but I did, you know, I started by picking it up going, wow, this thing's amazing. Could I frisbee it? Um, and then I immediately went and I got my MagSafe pop socket and stuck it on the back. This is just, uh, I think this is the the Galaxy Nebula. That's the name of it. Nebula um, pop socket from um, pop socket and it's MagSafe and you just pop it on. It sticks on there. It's very satisfying thunk and it's, it's not going anywhere. Um, just to be very clear, even on the the, the Pro, I checked it on the old Pro Max. I, I, I went back to the family member who who claimed it at the weekend and, and said, I need to borrow your phone and stand next to your sofa for 10 minutes and shake. Um, and uh, it, it didn't go anywhere with that either. Um, but um, yeah, I was slightly amazed at how big this thing is. Um, and I did use it um, as an opportunity. I, I only transferred using iCloud. I didn't do the direct device transfer. Um, a, because I knew I had to leave the house and I needed a working phone for that. Um, and I didn't mm. want to have to take a humongous battery pack with me along with two iPhones and an Apple Watch and an iPad mini when I left the house. It seemed a tad excessive to say the least. Um, <laughs> so I did the iCloud option because this way, when apps are downloading, you can tap and hold on one and say prioritize this. So for the apps that I use the most frequently, which are the ones on my home screen, I just did the the tap and hold and prioritize those. I also use it as an opportunity to switch my mail client to the uh, mail app from Apple um, because it seemed like a, a good opportunity to do that. But um, yeah, it was you know set up for me aside from the Apple Watch issue was relatively painless. And a friend of mine just pinged me and, and noted that even um, if the transfer of the watch works because it did for him, it still turns off the watch unlock. So everybody um, is yeah, facing that issue. But as Scooter X has posted in the IRC, um, Apple's promised to fix this. Um, I'm hoping that it's a relatively easy fix um, because, um, yeah, it, that would be really good to have that back. It's very frustrating right now. My passcode yeah. is only six characters, but it feels too long. And I actually would like to set it to a longer passcode um, for security. But yeah. Um, Obviously, I'm not willing to do that right now when I have to type it in 10, 15 times in the supermarket, even though technically I don't have to wear a mask, but I do. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm really impressed with it. It's It feels like a very nice device. And the blue in particular is a lovely shade of blue. Um, and, you know, you can, like, it, depending on what light it's in, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it really does pick up purples, which is really lovely. Um, and especially... If you, if you pop it next to something that is purple, um, and for people who aren't aware, purple is my favorite color. So I frequently have other purple things around. <laughs> um, so it does pick up that color very nicely. Um, and especially in the Wisteria case, um, it, it, yeah, it's, it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely impressed. And the screen, I have to say, captured me more than I was expecting. Um, I do have the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the ProMotion display. That's gorgeous, but I've never... I don't know, maybe because I didn't have a 12.9 inch device before, but I've never really gone, wow, the screen really feels amazing. Maybe it's because I do hold my phones, you know, closer to me most of the time when mm. my iPad Pro is usually on my lap or at a bit of a distance. Um, but wow, yeah, the screen is gorgeous. And it really, you know, it it somehow feels a little bit faster just from the screen perspective, um, which I know is just my mind playing tricks on me rather than anything else. Um, so, Yeah. It's, it's the, the it's subtlety, yeah. the subtlety of that yeah. variable refresh rate for folks who are wondering what uh, we're talking about here. Those uh, the promotion technology in the iPhone in particular is uh, a a refresh rate that can ramp up or ramp down depending on what you're doing. And so often with scrolling, the screen is going to be at 120 hertz refresh rate. Uh, so it just it, everything looks it's instead of there being a kind of um, almost a motion blur that takes place where you see some of the stuff on screen, but not other things. Uh, so as you're scrolling, things kind of uh, blur away. With 120 hertz, it's 
like your eyes got an upgrade in the sense that you can sort of see everything moving up and down on the screen uh, as you are looking at it. So it's just a, it's a really fascinating thing and it's kind of hard to um, sort of quantify without actually looking at it yourself. But uh, yeah, I have, I, I noticed it a little bit more, I think I've gotten used to it because of the iPad Pro uh, to a certain extent, but having it on the phone and sort of recalibrating everything brought that out again. I know that people really love, especially sort of gearheads, really love the uh, 120 hertz refresh rate. It hasn't, you know, been life-changing or anything like that, but I do find it an interesting uh, upgrade that looks cool. <laughs> uh, but with that, I think the is the opposite understanding Um it goes up to 120 hertz, but it can also drop down to very uh, slow refresh rates depending on what's on screen. And by doing that, it improves upon the battery life. And these phones, the the iPhone 13, the iPhone 13 Pro, uh, all got a huge battery life upgrade that I think makes all the difference. Uh, the people are really, if they are getting the newest phone, um, are really going to to dig. Uh, where the iPhone 12, I was able to, you know, use it all day and not have uh, concern about battery. This just takes that to the next level. So uh, when I'm doing things that are outside of the norm, you know, maybe I'm doing more uh, going to San Francisco or something. So I'm using navigation uh, more than with this newer phone, at the end of the day, I don't have that concern that I might be running out of battery and need to pop on uh, or, you know, pop in a, uh, a charger. So I think battery life is going to come out being one of mm -hmm. the, the favorite features yeah. of these devices uh, just because of the improvements there. I'm curious, Rosemary, um, about your experiences with the camera so far. I know I've had fun taking some macro photos yeah, so I've, I've not really gone anywhere to take great pictures yet. Um, something I'm actually hoping that I'm going to be able to have an opportunity to do this Friday. Um, but um, I have been messing around taking some pictures. I did some macro photos of the material of my sofa and things like that. And I've, I've really enjoyed that. What I'm, I'm most enjoying, though, is the new telephoto, the 3X telephoto, because that was something I definitely missed on the mini, that telephoto lens, the mini for people. This is the, the 12 mini, not the 13 mini. Um, the, the, the stuff doesn't have a telephoto lens. It, it's only got the normal and wide angle lenses. Um, and the, the new I, uh, iPhone mini apparently has very good battery life, which is my other complaint. That one's been fixed, but the, the camera has not. Um, so they, they can't fit an extra lens in there. Um, but um, I'm really liking it, especially the image stabilization. The fact that every single lens has optical mm -hmm. image stabilization now, that for me is, is a big thing because... I'm not a great photographer. I do love taking pictures and so on. But even though I've got a very nice point and shoot with, you know, proper optical zoom and everything on it, um, you know, it, it's, um, I, I think it's a Canon something or other with 30 times optical zoom or uh, something like that. At least that's what I remembered saying. Um, it, <laughs> you know, I, I, I've got that, but I'm rarely going to take that and use it to take pictures just because I always have my iPhone with me and I don't know when I'm going to want to take pictures. Um, and I don't like carrying a camera around. I used to have a DSLR and I knew how to do all the things. But I, so when I was on holiday with my parents, my dad was saying, you know, there was no point with the other cameras because if he walked into somewhere and it was dark, he would spend 10 minutes changing all the settings on the camera to make sure that he got a really great photo of this lovely dark area and then have to go back outside and set everything back to what he previously <laughs> had it set. You walk into a dark area with an iPhone, you pop open the camera from the lock screen, you press the button, you take the picture, you walk out, you know, you spend 10 minutes enjoying the actual site that you're looking at or whatever it is or this area you stumbled upon, and then you walk back outside and your phone does everything automatically. Now, of course, you can stick your camera in auto mode, but if you're carrying around DSLR, you probably shouldn't be using it in auto. Um, you know, there's there, there's a reason why all the settings exist, and they, they don't on the iPhone. But I, I have to say, I have really been liking it. Um, I've tried the cinematic mode. Now, I have to say, this is very difficult to try when you don't have an entire cast of people um, at a set um, or, you know, places with everything planned out. Um, yeah. But um, <laughs> it, it is something that's fun. Uh, Micah, I'm wondering, have you managed to train your dogs to, to you know, use <laughs> this feature as for testing on it yet? Or are they just staring at you going, there's not enough treats in the world for this? 
Yeah, they have this weird aversion. They're like, as soon as the camera comes out, they're immediately like, oh, he's trying to take photos. So now we have to start acting like silly little dogs that run away. They, It's like they know that I'm trying to capture photos of them. So I had to do mm -hmm. some stationary things just for testing. I haven't, like I'm I'm going to uh, try to get some fun shots done soon. Uh, but just, you know, in the lead up to today, I did a few tests um, with like a, there's a, a, there are some photos on my refrigerator. And so I sort of stood back from my refrigerator uh, so that, the uh, island that's in the middle of the kitchen was in front of me that I and I have stuff on top of that. And so the focus kind of shifted from the stuff on the mm -hmm. kitchen table in the foreground to the photos on the refrigerator in the background, um, which required me manually making adjustments as opposed to the automatic uh, that's available with cinematic mode just sort of built in. So I, I, like you said, this, I think, as cool of a feature as it is, it doesn't seem to be one of those that is just um, sort of a, a shoot it and you're done kind of thing. This is one of those, let's figure out how to set this up so that it works how we want to. I mean, Apple hired a director and you know professional cinematographers to show off this feature uh with its promotional video so yeah given that you know that this is one of those features where it's going to be better uh if you do take the time to set it up i was trying to think on uh twitter i saw a fun set of videos um someone had because cats uh perhaps will stay in one place longer than uh, their their doggy counterparts, or at least will ignore you uh, as opposed to when you're <laughs> sort of crouching. Like yeah, because, you know, I if I crouch down with the camera, the dogs immediately get up and want to come over and, you know, jump up on me and say, hi, how are you? But a cat's like, oh, why are you so close to me? But at least it stays still. Um, so there was a some fun video on Twitter the other day, and I, I'll have to try to find it uh, while you're talking because it, there was a it was it was a cat kind of sitting on a sofa and um there was some cinematic mode between the two uh so yeah i mean cinematic mode as cool as it is i just haven't had a chance to really give it a go uh but did you like um oh have you used any of the 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 photo modes the the new photo modes that are available in the camera cuz i found that they don't seem all that different to me from the uh, the stuff that's already built into, or the stuff that was built in, the filters that were built in before. Uh, yeah, now so I contrast. had a little bit of a look. Um, and I, yeah, it's one of these things where I haven't really seen a big difference here. Um, and I don't know if this is because I'm holding it wrong. Uh, that is, of course, a possibility. <laughs> it's always possible to, to, you know, be doing these things wrong. But generally, I've, I've not seen much of a difference. Um, you know, I have found portrait mode seems to be better. Um, but equally, when you're taking a picture of a glass of water, it's really difficult to mess it up. Um, so um, I, I, I'm really glad that, you know, that's that's not gone away. So um, I will just pop open uh, my iPhone here on the screen. Um, and we're in the camera mode. So I'm just going to point this down at my keyboards um, and try my best to keep the iPhone still. Now, what I've done is there's this little arrow at the top of the, the camera um, where below the notch, where if you tap that, then it reveals some further options. And the further options um, should be under these three squares here, where you can then swipe to customize the camera. Um, so you can switch between standard, rich contrast, vibrant, and warm. Um, and yeah, as you said, Micah, I mean, in this particular case, I guess my keyboard is probably not the ideal test bed for this. But if I swipe over to the filters, then I have you know, vivid, vivid, warm, vivid, cool, and so on here. Um, and honestly, you know, these obviously, they're, they're using different technologies, um, but it seems to me like those are more likely to get the result um, than um, that I'm after versus, um, you know, uh, the the actual new features. However, of course, it's possible that the new features will get a bit more of an upgrade um, as things, as time goes on, because, you know, there there is now people have got their hands on these cameras, then we'll, we'll see what people can do with them. And I know Austin Mann did a really great review um, of the iPhone camera, which uh, we can put a link to that in the show notes, I think, um, in case anybody's really curious to see how a professional photographer used uh, an iPhone 13 for a while. 
Yes. Um, yeah, the, the, always love that. Uh, I, I found the video, so we could show that really quick. Uh, this is from Chris Davies on uh, Twitter. And the, the tweet just says, cinematic mode is basically just for cat videos, right? And you have to agree, a cat does make a good subject for uh, using cinematic mode. Yeah. As you switch between this uh, really pretty textured pot in the foreground and uh, a sofa in the foreground to a uh, black and white kitty in the background, sort of yawning and looking, uh, looking around. I guess it was a bowl, not a pot. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just for, for folks who are listening and not watching, it's just these sort of sweeping pans of a kitty cat and uh, that nice bouquet effect that's there. Uh, as as Chris moves between the foreground and the background of the cat. So uh, some fun stuff. I mean, what I liked about this video is that it actually looks pretty good. It didn't have yeah. that portrait mode feel that... Because uh, even to this day, Apple's made a lot of improvements on portrait mode. But even to this day, I will regularly on Instagram see people posting with portrait mode turned on and you immediately know because if there there's like a hole that their arm makes because so, you know they're they're sort of grasping their waist akimbo uh, style or they um, they you know anywhere where there are little spaces in the background sometimes those will not have the same bouquet effect as the rest of yeah. the, the background and you immediately go oh that person was using portrait mode but with this if it's done uh, well I think in a well lit area here's the tip. Um, use a well-lit environment and um, try to stabilize the camera in some way. That will help you. Yes. And then uh, the other thing is that just keep in mind that you can do the focus changes afterward. So don't feel like you have to tap on the screen while you're recording it to get that focus mode change done just as you want to because you can make that happen after it's done. Um, in the you know in the in the settings, so don't again don't feel like you need to because that could sometimes sort of make the the photo blurry. You'll see like you can definitely tell that this iPhone that's on a tripod that thing is stuck fast. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. And then of course this scene is professionally lit, um, but you don't need the professional lighting. You're just uh, some as that cat video was showing. That was just natural light from outdoors. Uh, but yeah, more lighting the better given that it's switching between those lenses. And the same goes for macro photography. Um, when you are taking a photo with your uh, iPhone 13 Pro, uh, well, I guess, yeah, If you, when you're taking a photo uh, and you, you want to do the macro photography, it happens automatically. You will actually see sort of a transition between the two as you get closer to an object. Um, Apple mm -hmm. may be changing that in the future where you can sort of turn off automatic switch to, uh, to macro, but right now it's an automatic thing. And so I was moving in on, um, I've got... Uh, a paper towel holder from OXO and uh, on the top of it is that is a little, you know, knob that you can grasp to sort of pull the paper towels. And so I just wanted to take a macro photo of that because I was sitting at my kitchen uh, counter. So I sort of moved in and it recognized I wanted to do mono, but then it uh, unrecognized that I wanted to do mono. And so then it sort of zoomed back out a little bit and it was showing the whole top of the paper towel roll. So it can be a little finicky right now in these early days, um, but it, it shoots. Here's what I'll say. It is not as macro as I was expecting. Um, while it does shoot uh, closer than, you know, iPhone 12 or any of your other IO or iPhone or iPads. It was not as, as sharp and close as I thought that it was going to be. So, all right, Rosemary Orchard, tell us about your final thoughts after a weekend being hands-on with the iPhone 13. Well, it's still big, but I think I'm okay with that. Um, I found um, with a little bit of work, especially thanks to the MagSafe Pop Socket, I can reach my thumb right from the bottom corner right up 
pretty much to the top corner. It's a little difficult for me to demo because of the way I have to hold the pop socket at the back to keep a secure grip. Obviously, I could, you know, like shuffle my hands around like this, but then I feel like I might drop the iPhone. Um, that is honestly, I think so far my only complaint. The other things are small software issues, which will, uh, I have zero doubt, be addressed um, as as time goes on, you know, with the, the watch unlock and everything. It is a gorgeous phone screen. I really like that. The cameras are great. And the battery life is incredibly impressive. I do have a friend who who just got the uh, 13 mini and they said um, that the the battery life is on par with their 11 pro that they had before. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased for everybody who's interested in the mini, but maybe held off because of the battery life. Um, you know, now seems like a good time to jump in. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased. It's, it's gorgeous. The blue color is lovely. It's a nice light blue color uh, for people who don't like that. There are other color choices. So 13 pro definitely gets my vote of a great device. What about you, Micah? Uh, yeah, I, so Sequoia green case, uh, leather case. I think that the leather cases are fantastic. Uh, the, the ones that Apple makes, I think are fantastic with the, the machined buttons and the, for folks who are wondering too, the camera bump is even more expressed so that it, uh, keeps those cameras covered up. Uh, you'll notice as I'm sure many people have shown, um, the it's kind of well it's it's really hard to tell on here uh but the camera lenses on the new iphone this is the green one is the newer one are quite a bit bigger than the ones that you will see mm -hmm. on the iphone 12. um so yeah again kind of hard to see on here but uh you'll have to take my word for it there uh they are much bigger and um overall i'm enjoying this device um i would say if you have an iphone 12 uh, and you're thinking about upgrading, but you're not 100%, you're not going to get something that is so much better that it's like, wow, I, I'm so glad I did this. Uh, but if you're upgrading from an older device, I think that you will have that wow factor. So just bear that in mind. Uh, but ultimately, very cool device. Loving the battery life so far. Um, the Sierra Blue is nice. Um, I do wish, again, that there were more colors for those of us going for the Pro model. And um, yeah, I think uh, I think Apple nailed it in terms of uh, you know iterating on an already great phone. Yes, yeah, I do just want to say in case people have seen the the comments about how the iPhone 13 Pro does not fit on the MagSafe Duo, that is not 100% true. Basically, what happens? I don't have my MagSafe Duo here, unfortunately. I left it in the other room, but the MagSafe Duo um, does just come up. Uh, it's got a very narrow tolerance right here, but it does still fit on here. Um, there, there are no problems with it actually fitting um, there. It just, you know, it feels like because this this camera bump is bigger and deeper um, and this sticks out further that it it feels like maybe it doesn't fit quite as much. With a non-Apple case, you probably won't even notice it, um, it at all. Um, but for anybody who's worried about it, I've tested it out. My iPhone 13 Pro charges on the MagSafe Duo, no problem. So you don't need to worry about that. There you go.